Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Unseen video. We've got a few reports doing the rounds that something might be happening with King Charles. So if I seem a little bit distracted, that's what I'm distracted about. There's just a few rumors at the time of recording this. So uh, obviously we'll find out very soon if anything comes of that. But we're here to focus on wrestling. We're here to talk about WWE and still no news on Asuka, although we do have a potential update coming on that later in this video as well. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, we've got this, which is results from the recent live show. Thought you might enjoy these results, actually, because we don't get to see live show results very often. So here we can see R-Truth beat Dominic by DQ. Uh, R-Truth and New Day defeated the Judgment Day, so clearly that uh, second match followed on from the first. Uh, AJ defeated Carlito. Rhea Ripley defeated Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, Sami Zayn defeated Shinsuke Nakamura. LA Knight defeated Solo Sokoa. Omos still around and actually i haven't factored in omos into my thinking for wrestlemania but we probably should he is an active superstar who absolutely could appear in some fashion at wrestlemania so omos defeated akira tozawa naomi and bianca defeated eo and Kyrie, and in our main event cody rhodes defeated drew mcintyre so as we said we don't get chance to see many of the results from house shows thought you might be interested to know what's happening in house shows so uh derez fan 2024 shout out to you my friends uh we've got some announcements coming up for what we're going to get on raw so here look not sean michaels says tomorrow night or tonight, whenever you are watching this. Uh, we have nothing but respect for the Creeds. I wholeheartedly wish we could both be in that ladder match, and I completely agree. But we're both gunning for the same spot, and I promise we're going to fight like hell to finally punch our ticket to WrestleMania. As well as that, look, before clashing over the IC title at WrestleMania, Gunther and Sammy are going to do a contract signing. We're going to get a contract signing on Raw between these two. Uh, Jay Uso says that Solo Sokoa is all about the yeet. So just a fun little interview with Jay. He has made it clear he feels that his brother Solo Sokoa is more yeet the no yeet so he thinks that he can like entice him over to his side it's just a interesting little comment i wouldn't really read too much into it but just thought just thought i'd make you aware drew mcintyre said that he wants to face cm punk still he would love to do that match when punk's back but he's worried that he's made of glass and he's really worried that he would break him so uh, fun comments from drew as he continues to stick that knife in i mean when cm punk comes back it's going to be absolutely huge absolutely huge when CM Punk comes back. Um, he's clearly going to be built into a match with Drew, but clearly he's going to be built into a match with Seth as well. There's uh, plenty of options on the table for CM Punk when he returns. Yeah, look at this. This is cool. I won't play the sound just in case, but a cool video here. Triple H tweeting this out six hours ago. Their rivalry has left a path of destruction at every turn. And tomorrow night, only one can be the last woman standing. Becky Lynch, Nia Jax, Raw. So we've seen these two go up against each other a few times this year. They're facing again in a last woman standing match. This time, I think Becky's getting the win, uh, which I think is a real shame, to be honest. Uh, I think that Nia should just be that woman that she just cannot get past. And I really enjoyed Nia beating Becky this year. But um, yeah, weird font. Uh, but uh, there we go. We are getting a last woman standing match. And my prediction is that Becky will emerge victorious. And then uh, just a uh, Brady thank you for a little uh, footage here of Naomi and Bianca doing a little dance together. We have been seeing Naomi doing some fun dances 
with different women at house shows. So uh, there we go. This time it's Bianca as they, they're not perfectly in sync, uh, but they're, they're all thereabouts. Bit of a delay on the arm. Going to mark him down for that. It was all right. Not a bad off for him. I've seen better. But uh, there we go. Just another little glimpse into what's happening at the house shows. So that was the WWE folder. Let's have a look at the Roman folder. Got a few bits in here. Uh, so, Ethan, thank you. Uh, Roman Reigns is currently advertised for SummerSlam this year. Now, I didn't think this was a massive deal. I fully expect him to be at SummerSlam. But um, I don't know. I don't know if people are thinking he's going to be there as champion or something. I mean, I'm thinking Cody against The Rock uh, would be pretty good for SummerSlam. Or we could always do Cody Roman too, um, of course. Or we could even have Roman going off uh, and facing someone else. Maybe we do Seth against Roman. So we could go down that road. So uh, plenty of options for Roman at SummerSlam. Uh, I would have been surprised had he not have been there. So uh, apparently advertised. Uh, and this as well, Jordan said, look, interesting. Is this hinting at Rikishi running over Cody for The Rock like he did with Stone Cold? So we've just got a little gif here of a car uh, revving and its lights starting up and everything. Uh, Rikishi says keys. Um, I think it is probably teasing that. But the only thing I would say is that Rikishi says a lot. He says a lot, right? On social media, he really is wanting to be a part of the conversation. And I can't blame him, you know, that his kids, his family are all involved in WWE. He was involved in WWE. He's got a big following. He likes to interact with the fans. So I don't blame him, but I really don't think you can read much into it. I mean, if, if Rikishi was going to get involved in a storyline... I really don't know that he would put a little tease out for it on social media. There's no need for him to do that. So I I, I kind of take this as him just getting a bit of engagement, him getting a bit of traction on his social media accounts, you know. I don't blame him for it. But I get tagged in this kind of stuff a lot. So I thought, well, let's include it, show it just in case, but make it quite clear as to where I stand with it. And that is, I think this is just a tease troll job. Nothing more than that. Uh, Brian Go, it's this is interesting. Look at this. So, Courtaholic here said the Rock's segment overran. Time cut on matches again, right? Read more. Brian Gerwitz has said the segment went 30 seconds under. It's allotted 20 minutes. So, according to Brian Gerwitz, who is the Rock's personal writer, the Rock did not overrun. The Rock did not overrun. The Rock uh, had 20 minutes. He got his stuff in, in time, which is quite eye-opening, to be honest, because you would then look at the rest of the show and go, man, some of that stuff felt real tight. Some of that stuff felt like it was rushed. And if you're telling me that's not the case, then... Well, I think we've got a problem with our pacing. I think the rest of the show did not feel right. And I think a lot of people kind of pointed their fingers at The Rock as being the reason why the rest of it felt really rushed and really tight. Well, the personal writer of The Rock here is saying the segment went 30 seconds under. It's uh, allotted 20 minutes, so don't go blaming The Rock. Uh, talking of The Rock, he also came out on Instagram after SmackDown to say that networks and standards and practices have issues with his language, but he'd rather be real than not. I talk from the heart, I shoot from the hip, and I try to always have fun. So that's The Rock's attitude. Sadly, other wrestlers can't have that attitude because they'll lose their jobs. So The Rock does find himself in a very privileged position. But then I think we can agree that The Rock has earned that privileged position. He's done the miles. He's done the hard graft. He did it during the Attitude Era. His contribution to WWE, his contribution to wrestling, his contribution to entertainment cannot be understated. So I do not begrudge him. Uh, enjoying certain freedoms that maybe other people wouldn't get away with. They've got to earn it, right? But uh, even so, I think we've got to be a little careful here. But saying that he's a heel, 
right now. You're not meant to like him, right? If you think that he's getting away with stuff that other people couldn't get away with and that's not fair, well, then it's fine for you to hate The Rock right now. You're meant to. So uh, I suppose in a way it's win-win. So that is The Rock's feeling about uh, the whole profanity kind of debate at the moment. So there we go. He'd rather be himself and talk from the heart. Let's go to Asker, shall we? Not much in this folder. So uh, Tom, who's a very good journalist, he uh, came out and said that Asuka has been removed from live events whilst being assessed for potential injury. Asuka was due to wrestle at WrestleMania 40. There is an option for Dakota Kai to defend the tag titles on Asuka's behalf. Now, what I would say is there is another rumor and it is nothing more than a rumor, but I have seen it written down on the internet, which must mean it's true, uh, that she may have suffered. And I'm going to say may. I'm going to emphasize may. And I'm going to once again say that this is not confirmed, right? Right now, we don't know what's happened. But there is a rumor that she may have broken her ankle. So, again, I didn't think we would get an update today. We haven't had an update today. Um, let's wait and see if we get anything tomorrow so Asuka still unknown unfortunately Logan came out though Alex thank you uh, Logan came out and said according to Logan on Instagram his US title match at Wrestlemania is going to be on night 2 and so Alex rightfully says does that mean the other mid card title match will be night 1 um, Gunther against Sammy and I, I think that's perfectly reasonable to assume that's what we're going to do is that we will do the one mid-card title match on the one night we'll do the other mid-card title match on the other night so yes uh, Gunther, Sammy I think looks pretty good for night one now unless they've already announced it for night two I, I genuinely haven't seen that announcement if they have but I'd be thinking they'd want these on different nights. So that's very interesting. How oh, and this is pretty fun. Uh, if we can go over here. Here we go. Let's whoosh it in so it's a bit bigger. This is just a brilliant uh, little clip from Logan. He kind of goes through the story of how we've got to where we've got. Um, I, this isn't really going to tell you anything you don't already know. But I really like the editing. I really like the editing. I like the little sound effects. I like the little images that they've put in. I think, for me, the editing on this is why I wanted to show it to you. So, this is the story of uh, how we got to this triple threat. WWT. So, Randy Orton RKO'd me and eliminated me from the Elimination Chamber. So, what did I do? What anyone would do. I faked a back injury on the edge of the cage. I can't move. And when Randy was about to win, I knocked him out. With brass knuckles, fine. Well, hey, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Fast forward two weeks, we're announcing the Prime Center Ring partnership with the WWE. Randy Orton, out of nowhere, RKO's my business partner. Oh, hell no. So now I'm mad. That's assault, brother. Then yesterday, we had Randy Orton. I kissed him on the forehead. I was about to punch him in the face. In comes the human bowling ball, Kevin Owens. You might recognize Kevin Owens from my chamber drawing, the rotund stick figure. I like to move it, move it. I actually wrestled him once before. Uh, here's some highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully though, that was a harder fight than Floyd Mayweather. He made my nose bleed and uh, scraped me up a little bit. But now I got these two dudes who I've separately pissed off that I'm in a triple threat match with, which is why I was freaking out last night. How is that fair? But regardless, two on one, three on one, five on one, I don't care. Logan Paul's not getting gangbanged. <laughs> All right, here's the WWT. So there we go. So uh, I just thought there was some really fun editing bits in there. I love the human bowling ball thing and the Wii Sports uh, with Kevin going down the lane. I just thought that was so good. There's a few little bits. Uh, he shows the drawing of the stick figure and all that stuff. There's a few bits in there, which I just thought was really, really good. So I wanted to show you that. So uh, very good, very fun. Let's uh, flip back over. Take that away. Lovely, lovely. So uh, Harry, thank you. Appreciate it. So we've done Logan. We've done Asuka. We've done... Roman, we've done Roman. Uh, we've done WWE. Wow, we're getting through it today, aren't we? Let's go to uh, fun, shall we? See what we've got. Oh, some good stuff here. Uh, WWE, the bump. 
Uh, where did the wolf dog's team name originate? Probably not where you expected. I think we already knew this because I'm sure they mentioned this during NXT. But uh, a, a fun little 20 second clip here all the same. This is Baron Corbin explaining how the wolf dogs got their team name. I mean, it, it's crazy because this man creepily came up with it in the shower <laughs> and told me he came up with it in, in the, the shower, shower. <laughs> uh, like our third week as a team. And I'm like, bro, you're already thinking of us in the shower. I'm just going to keep saying shower because it was weird. Rod's in there with his loofah going, and I just, I feel this team name. I mean, it, it's the mental image of Brom Breaker with a loofah. I mean, that's the kind of image that stays with you, isn't it? So there we go. Uh, just if you've not heard that he came up with the name in the shower before, I thought it was a fun little clip. So uh, Joey, shout out to you. Bron can't stop thinking about Corbin for real. Very good. Uh, Nick, thank you. This is fun. Do you remember that Dusty Rhodes guy that went up to Ric Flair and Rick was loving it? I didn't realize this guy has got his own, like... Uh, Instagram account and all that kind of stuff and he hangs around with someone that looks like Macho Man. So there's a whole video here of like Dusty Rhodes picking up Macho Man. It's quite long and it's got a load of like music in. I get nervous with music because of copyright issue. But I did find an alternative uh, clip which I really enjoyed. We'll uh, bring it in. So here we go. This is from the Macho Man Lookalike channel. He hangs out with that Dusty Rhodes guy. You can find both of them on Instagram. This one is the Macho Verse. Okay. <laughs> I just like this. I just really like this. So uh, why he isn't texting you right now? This is taken from one of those videos where, you know, it's very serious. Look, you need to know this is why he's not texting you. It's because of this, right? Enjoy this. Do you want to know why he's not texting you right now? <laughs> this is why. Because this is what he's doing instead. Fighting on the subway. Go on, Macho. Oh, boom. Elbow drop. Do you want to know why he's not texting you right now? <laughs> he's cheating on you that's why yeah but it's not it's because he's doing this yeah look at the entrance graphic as well brilliant look at these people loving it as well oh this would be the best imagine if they did imagine if they did like subway wrestling where a load of wrestlers two wrestlers get on they fight till we get a, a, a winner and whatever and you just each one gets uploaded as a uh, an individual video on a YouTube channel. I don't know. I mean, like, you've got to be real careful when you're doing stuff around the public. So, some people wouldn't like it. Some people just want to, you know, get to work or get back home. They've got other things going on. But I don't know, man. That was a fun little clip. I, I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, awesome. Nick, shout out to you, bud. Appreciate it. Boom. Lovely. Right. Oh, this is one of the best things i've never seen this clip before but this is one of the best clips i've seen today right or actually over the past few days i love this so uh it's samoa joe's birthday today happy birthday samoa joe right gotta relive him clowning on a cm punk fan look at this 20 odd seconds long here we go look cm punk fan <laughs> Yeah, that's great, but we'll do it to CM Punk. Now, Samoa Joe's just having fun there right now, and the crowd's eating it up. You know, how much fun is he going to have if, uh, you know, when he gives CM Punk enough time to gain his composure, CM Punk takes his time. Oh, it's brilliant. Look at it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. But go do it to CM <laughs> I've never seen that clip before. I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I don't know why we've not done more moments like that. Like, with the fans. Uh, like, I mean, you think about all the shows that we do. Like, I'm just, we don't see stuff like that on the shows. I don't know if this is from, like, one of their TV tapings or if this was a house show. I'm guessing because of the camera being there, it was one of their proper shows. 
But, uh, oh, that is so good. That is so, so good. He's just a natural, isn't he, Samoa Joe? An absolute natural. I've got all the time in the world for him. So happy birthday, Samoa Joe. Right, moving on. We've got Jade Cargill who said broken glass is my thing. Like, oh, and this got people talking. Her talking about broken glass, the whole Sting retirement match conversation, the Jungle Boy conversation. People are like, what's going on? And she says, more specific, shattered glass on my gear is my thing. So cheeky, cheeky little thing. Look, she's been trolling today, actually. I think we might have another tweet from her later on in this folder. I think it's this folder. Might be the other folder. But uh, we did get another uh, cheeky little message from her. Is it in this folder? Let's have a look. No. Oh, I hope I included it. I hope I don't forget to mention it. Right, uh, not sure Michaels again said the fact that I've watched this tiny human go from an <laughs> Man, if I was Candice, I would not appreciate this description. The fact that I've gone from watching this tiny tiny human go from an alien looking thing being ripped from his mom's body. <laughs> <laughs> to being able to comprehend and do this in only two years is the most mind-blowing thing. P.S. I hope he says W like this forever. Elephant. Doing good. Like I've got these right so far, by the way. Wagon. Wagon. What letter is it? Dub do. Dub do you. Yeah, we go. Dub W. That that's I was thinking about this. That is a whole new wrestling promotion. Dub W. Come on. Dub W. Dub W. That is how W should be said going forward now. Dub Dub U. So there we go. There is um a Quill. Is it Quill? I think Quill is the child, the the alien looking thing. I think that's it's there. <laughs> this description, man. Uh, Johnny is a fun follow on Twitter, so give him a follow if you haven't already. Right, look at this. Uh, Alan Cheapshot said British wrestling. Right, uh, Bendo, who went to I think this was PC Dub in the UK Preston Championship Wrestling. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Currently experiencing a delay in the show. Okay, it happens, doesn't it? Right. While they take an age to decide how a half-eaten sausage roll is going to be cleaned up and by who, I am not making any of this <laughs> There's a half-eaten sausage roll, and they're trying to figure out who's going to clean it up. I love the guy on his knees. He's on his knees. Like, and what's, what's the dude announcing? Is he, like, giving us running commentary as to what's happening with the sausage roll? But, yeah, look at this. Alan Cheapshot says, British wrestling, man. It's the best. It's the best. I, you would never get this in WWE currently experiencing a delay whilst they try to figure out how to clean up a half-eaten sauce. And I love this bit. And who's going to do it? You can imagine them going, oh, get that out of the ring. And he's going, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not the cleaner. What do you, mean? I do, you do it. Well, I'm not doing it. I'm the, I'm the announcer. I can't go cleaning up that. Well, who's going to do it? We haven't hired anyone to clean up the half-eaten sausage wrong. <laughs> So if you do go to a British wrestling show, don't throw a half-eaten sausage roll in the ring because no one seems to know what to do. Mass panic is what we get. Right, uh, PW Scoops uh, said, WWE higher-ups sent out a memo a few weeks ago to talent reminding them that they need to stick to PG language even on social media, right? Now, apparently they have got this one from... Uh, se scoops right dijack said ah oh, shiz they lost my email again so uh, apparently dijack did not receive that memo right so uh, he's joking that they must have lost his email 
Uh, Eric, thank you. Appreciate you tagging me in it, dudes. And uh, this is just a fun little clip here with Nia Jax and Kyrie Sane. I don't think we ever really got over that language barrier. No, it's not, it's not your fault. <laughs> what the fuck? You speak English? <laughs> of course I do. You've spoke English the whole time I've been here. I speak English since I was five years old. <laughs> I don't think we ever really got... I like that. That's good. It's good to see Kyrie just having a little bit of fun online. So you've got Naya basically saying we've never got over that language barrier. And then it turns out that Kyrie can actually speak English. She's spoken English since, since she was five. So uh, I thought that was good. I enjoyed that. Right. Let's go to other. I think there's a few bits uh, in here. Let's go down. <laughs> So uh, Hayden said, since Vince is no longer working with WWE, will Owen Hart get to go in the Hall of Fame one day? I think his wife, Martha, will still not let WWE. She won't. Because of what happened. Yes. So, I mean, this is from comments from JR. Jim Ross has said that he thinks there could be some movement on that. He thinks there could be some movement. He thinks that she may, uh, now that Vince has gone, reconsider but he's he was very honest in saying i don't know i don't it's a great question i i really don't know the answer but i think there may be some movement so there's really nothing to this story so i wouldn't don't get your hopes up nothing's changed but um i don't know it's one just worth considering isn't it uh kelly kelly has said she's interested in one more run right she's open to returning again alex said kelly kelly against tiffany stratton i really like that idea i love that idea that would be a great match perfect for wrestlemania because kelly kelly brings a bit of star power from those that remember her back in the day um and uh of course tiffany is super over tiffany could get a big win at wrestlemania it would be a big showcase match they're both very similar uh or at least were and so yeah i love that idea i, I don't expect it but um it would be great uh alex again said charlotte pulling a john cena so elite rockers said charlotte flair is now being advertised for the march 29th episode of smackdown what are they cooking? Now, honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know if this isn't just a generic graphic that has got Charlotte already on it. I think they I think they generate a few of these. I think there's a few that have got a few different combinations of wrestlers. And it may be that this one, this one might have been this way all along, right? It just may never have changed. This might have been the graphic they've been using to advertise this show from the start. Uh, it might also just be that they've just picked a random one, you know, that's got a few of the top stars on. And it just turns out one of them is injured at the moment. You know, this this is no indicator as to who you're going to actually see on the show. So I, I don't know that there's anything to it. Um, but, you know, I thought I'd include it just in case there was. Uh, Dream said Firefly Tribute. Yes, look at this Firefly Tribute. So Fandom Phases uh, is the one that got the footage. I like the commentary on this as well. So enjoy this. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, this is actually so beautiful. Oh, so I might start crying. <laughs> I might start crying. Oh. It's great, isn't it, that? It's great. Uh, and I like how when you look around, like, you can see it's absolutely... Look at that shot. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. All behind as well, so... Yeah. So it does look amazing, doesn't it, actually? It really does look very impressive. So uh, there we go. Dream uh, Firefly tribute to Bray Wyatt. So uh, Jay Kreiser, appreciate it, my friends. Here as well, look, Hayden said, WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle has met the real life Peter Griffin. Uh, he, he's been to a few WWE shows, actually. I think this is sort of what he does. He's got like an Instagram and maybe a TikTok and whatever. But um, yeah, he goes to WWE shows. We've seen him in the front row a few times. He tends to be more on the hard cam side, but um, I believe he is a... Wrestling fan, yes. And here he is with Kurt Angle. Very cool. Uh, this, I'm not going to bother playing this. Well, I can play it. I'll just take the sound down. Um, so this is Jeff Jarrett interrupting 
Jerry the King Lawler, who was getting a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Memphis Grizzlies game. So he was getting this. And then all of a sudden, Jeff Jarrett's music played. Jeff Jarrett came out. Uh, he came out, I believe, with Satnam Singh. There we go. Look at the size of him. Look at the absolute size of him. And uh, they take away his kind of Lifetime Achievement belt. So I don't know what this is. I don't know if this was just for this event or if this is going to build to something bigger. But uh, yeah, Jeff Jarrett interrupted with Satnam Singh to ruin Jerry Lawler's night at this Grizzlies game. So Hayden, thank you. That coming from uh, Wrestling News. Meechin said, Timeline cleanse. Uh, Jolene and Pharaoh, the locker room fur babies. So there is Meechin's dog. There's a picture of Pharaoh and uh, these two, the fur babies, the locker room fur babies, Meechin, tagging Cody Rhodes uh, in that post as well, which I thought was cute. Uh, this was nice. Kenny Omega said that John Cena is a great example of what the face of the industry should be. So uh, let's see if we can just whoosh this in. So uh, he says, Kenny said, John Cena is a great example. People went out of their way after the fact to say, look at all this stuff John is doing in his off time. Maybe he even laughs at himself. But for the amount of effort he has put in to make people's lives better, whether it's Make-A-Wish, fans at the arena, autograph signings, it's a great example of what the face of the company should be or the face of the industry. I'm a very big proponent of John Cena. I think he's incredible. Those are the words of Kenny Omega. Don't really expect that from Kenny Omega, but um, yeah, cool. Nice to see him paying some respect to John Cena. Uh, this dude, look, painted this mural, and there's actually a quick little video here of him doing it, which is really... I'm going to turn that down. Uh, which is really good. Look at that. Look at that. So uh, he is doing a fantastic job there. Time-lapse video of him creating this. Uh, I like seeing him create it as well because you could look at that and think, oh, is it real? Has he just done that on his phone and it's not really there? But this video shows him going through the process and he did an incredible job. So that's him uh, working away. Good, isn't it? Really good. So Liv Morgan said, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. You are so talented. I can't believe you actually made it. So it's lovely, that is. There we go. So uh, this person, Frederick, said, when are you wrestling again? Jay Cargill said, never. I make enough money not to. I told you guys that. Why do we keep bringing this up? So, look, she is so trolling, right? She's under a WWE contract. She appeared at the Royal Rumble, right? She's training at the moment. She is absolutely returning to wrestling. But uh, there was a lot of people that uh, tagged me in this and like, oh, have you seen what she said? It's like, guys, she's trolling. She's definitely trolling. She's just signed with WWE. She's definitely trolling. So uh, it looks like Jade was having a, uh, a fun day today. Zoe Stark has finally joined TikTok. I guess this is where I say go and follow to see more shenanigans. So uh, there we go. If you want to follow um, Zoe Stark. Uh, Wrestling World, Jessica Cart has shared her incredible full circle moment. So there she is. Look, meeting Randy when she was, I'm guessing, a fan. And then here she is as the ref with Randy in the ring. I mean, look at that. What a transformation. So very inspirational. So uh, wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, very cool. I tell you, it takes real guts to kind of open yourself up like that, you know, kind of uh, share like maybe pictures that you, um, I don't know, maybe don't feel too comfortable about sharing, you know, but um, she's been on an incredible journey and she's in an, inc in an incredible place and uh, I think she really is an inspiration. So wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Love this. Uh, yeah, this. look at this. This is some footage. So this is Northeast Wrestling 
right? Rey Mysterio against Carmelo Hayes against Darby Allen. What a match. Rey, Carmelo, Darby, main roster, NXT, AEW. But this was back in 2018. So there's uh, Darby, uh, Carmelo. Both have got slightly different hair. Ray looks exactly the same, of course. But um, look at this. I mean, Carmelo against Ray Mysterio is a match I've actually never thought about. But it's a match I totally want to see. And actually, Carmelo against Darby is a match I've never thought about. But here they are. Look, getting into it. What an amazing looking venue as well, actually. Look at this outdoor weird little venue. I wish WWE would do some roars at places like that, you know? Why don't we ever do outside roars? In fact, that's something else I've never thought about. Why don't we do outside roars? Look at this venue. I mean, I don't know what this venue can hold, but it still looks like a sizable amount of people. Yeah, so there we go anyway. Uh, we could get lost in uh, lost in that, but uh, fun. Uh, oh, Moxley Nightmare, shout out to you. Asked Dave Meltzer a question, got an answer, and it's a brilliant question. Any other history books you recommend for territory wrestling? Dave said Heath McCoy's book on stampedes, Larry Mattiski's Wrestling at the Chase, Rock Rim's books on California, Jim Cornette's book on Louisville, Pat LePrade and Bertrand Herbert on Montreal. John Lister's on the UK. I'd love to read that, actually. John Lister's book on UK wrestling. They're all books I've read multiple times, he said so. Very good. Sports Kida said, Mommy doesn't like hypocrisy and hypocrites. So Rhea put this out. Rhea has only got to where she is because she's hot. And then not even six months ago, Rhea looks like a man. You guys are the funniest. And yes, I'm laughing at you, not with you. So it seems like Rhea's been getting a bit of heat, a bit of hate, um, some trolling. And um, she's just kind of showing like how some of the points that she receives kind of, it doesn't add up. She's only got to where she is because she's hot. And then other people are saying she looks like a man. So... Welcome to X. Welcome to social media. That's what I would say. Randy Orton said, I've got some, I've had some great rivalries, but there's no doubt that John Cena was one of my favorites. Tune into A&E for the documentary. So Cena Orton was this week's documentary. Yeah, look at this. Becky Lynch met the president of the United States, met Joe Biden. So this uh, was in connection to St. Patrick's Day. So there's the picture of her with Joe Biden. She went with the Irish prime minister. So that's amazing. Um, and also she said, thanks for letting me class up your library, White House. She took her book, which she seems to be enjoying, even though she wrote it, and she left a copy there. I mean, I don't know if she actually left a copy, but she definitely should have left a copy. So uh, there we go. Her book is in the White House. So there's another picture of her drinking a Guinness as well. Uh, so you can see like all her pictures. There's not many. I think there's only about four. It might only be the Guinness one we're missing, but um, they're on her Instagram. But that's the big one. That's the one that's gone everywhere today. Becky with Joe Big Time Biden. <laughs> I did see people saying name that tag team that was doing the rounds and um, people were saying the old man uh, and stuff like this. So you can have fun with that in the comments. Here's what she said. Look, Becky Lynch said it was an honor to represent Ireland and WWE for St. Patrick's Day at the White House. Uh, Becky Balboa is winning it all in Philly. Had myself a pint and even classed up the library with a little gift. So there we go. Uh, the president said Becky Balboa is going to win it all in Philadelphia. And then this is our last one. So here, look, we've got uh, Chan Man, who's a great follow, likes to do threads of things. You might remember there was a thread of, like, transformations that we looked at the other day. Well, this is a thread of when wrestling turned real, and this is brutal, mate. This is brutal. 
This enhancement talent said disrespectful things to Mr. Fuji in the locker room. I never knew this story. So Yokozuna took care of this by giving him an unprotected bonsai drop. The enhancement talent screamed for the ref to get Yoko off of him. Yoko wouldn't budge until Fuji told him to. I'm going to show you this. And when he lands... It is horrific. I'm surprised this guy's ribs didn't just all cave in at the same time. So here it is. Here's the moment. Oh, my God. Shall I show it again? Look, here it is. Ah, there is nothing fake about what you've just seen there. That is just flat out assault. That is that is borderline murder. Right? We've seen a murder. Look, the ref's trying to say, get up. Look at the dude. He's like, get him off, get him off. <sighs> Why's he got security written on his front, not his back? Oh, my God. It just gets worse. They had to get a shovel to, like, scrape that dude off the ring. Oh, he has got it on his back. He's got it on the front and on the back. Oh, man. <sighs> That is brutal, isn't it? That is brutal. Right, I want to have a look at... I want to have a look at... Oh, look, King Charles is up to nearly 17,000 posts. This is what I was talking about earlier. Is King Charles actually dead? That was 16 minutes ago. Uh, uh, Rumours are that... Um, Rumours are that the flag was flying at half-mast... And so they're thinking that there may, might be, like, an announcement or something coming soon. But, um, yeah, it doesn't look like anything has... doesn't look like anything has come actually through. King Charles might be dead, question mark. Yeah, I've got a feeling this is just... I've got a feeling this is X, B, and X. Yeah, I've got a feeling it's X, B, and X. And actually, what with it being St. Patrick's Day and all of that kind of stuff, maybe... Um, Maybe there's a few jokers around that are uh, spreading that about. But that's what I saw literally just before uh, I started recording this. So I was half expecting like a notification or something to come through as we were doing this. But uh, considering we've been recording for 40 minutes, we haven't heard anything. It's probably X, B and X. So thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate the support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, I thought there was a few fun moments uh in there and uh that's Samoa Joe mo that's Samoa Joe moments probably my favorite one of my favorites of the past few days actually so hope you enjoyed it as well don't forget we are back later with that live stream for Raw we'll have another unseen for you afterwards appreciate the support as always and I'll see you again next time bye for now